awaiting her arrival in the United States waters, the mighty French battleship Richelieu proceeds to an American Navy yard for refitting and repair. First of more than 50 French warships to be equipped to fight against the Axis. At another American port, the cruiser Montcalm puts in for repairs and supplies. Built in 1936, she'll soon be back in action. Vice Admiral Raymond Fenard, heading the French Naval Commission to the United States, salutes his flag as he comes to place every available warship flying the tricolor on the side of the United Nations. In New York City, French sailors are introduced to free American refreshments. Quite a treat. Now, parading up Broadway, men of the French Navy return New York's hospitality with a gala review. French Blue Jackets and Marines, escorted by units of British and Americans, giving the big city the war's first view of America's traditional allies, now marching shoulder to shoulder in the common cause. Along the line of march, shouts of Vive la France tell these Frenchmen that the United Nations are with them in their fight for liberty. In front of New York's historic city hall, Mayor LaGuardia, with high-ranking French and United States dignitaries, officially welcomes the French Navy men to America. Fighting men of an awakened France, sworn to free their native land. One of the dramatic scenes of the war, the rebirth of French naval might, the beginning of France's return to her traditional position among the great nations of the world. Madam Chiang Kai-shek, First Lady of China, is welcomed to Washington by Mrs. Roosevelt, First Lady of the United States. Madam Chiang, for 15 weeks under medical care in New York, appears quite recovered as she hurries to greet President Roosevelt, who awaits her in his automobile. Her momentous meeting with the President is her first public appearance in the United States. A guest of the White House during her stay in the Capitol, the Chinese Joan of Arc has a busy calendar. Senators, lawmakers are eager to shake her hand. A tremendous ovation marks her dramatic appearance before the House of Representatives. Here, American-educated Madam Chiang Kai-shek, called the most powerful woman in the world, addresses the elected representatives of the American people. You, as representatives of the American people, have before you the glorious opportunity of carrying on the pioneer work of your ancestors beyond the frontiers of physical and geographical limitations. You have today before you the immeasurably greater opportunity to implement these same ideals and to help bring about the liberation of man's spirit in every part of the world. I can also assure you that China is eager and ready to cooperate with you and other peoples to lay a true and lasting foundation for a sane and progressive world society which would make it impossible for any arrogant or predatory neighbor to plunge future generations into another orgy of blood. British American outpost in Tunisia. There's a dogfight as Nazi dive bombers launch an attack to dislodge the Allies from hard won African airfields. One after another, Nazi planes plummet to earth.
on the slopes of the Atlas Mountains, American forces are poised for the opening round in the battle to join ranks with Montgomery's 8th Army. United States and British tank destroyers blasting at point-blank range. Only a few hundred yards away, Nazi panzers are halted by the terrific fire. the Nazis, beaten off in their first real battle with American troops, surrender. A war of attack and counterattack, with United Nations forces pushing doggedly on. Not far away, advance units of the British 8th Army enter Tripoli, metropolis of Libya. Climax of a drive that chased the Nazis 1,300 miles in 13 weeks. Today, the monument to the wolf that suckled the twin founders of Rome looks down upon victorious British tanks. Scene of official surrender. General Montgomery receives the Italian governor, his Lord Mayor, and Chief of Police. With the Union Jack flying over Libya, General Montgomery is not one to rest on his laurels. Riding through the city that once was the pride of Mussolini's colonial empire, General Montgomery pushes on to join the Americans and the British First Army in the fight for Tunisia. Already his tanks are on the move toward the final battle for North Africa. Somewhere in the California desert, America reveals new evidence of her growing might. A completely armored division, one of the latest, trained and ready to embark for action overseas. More than 2,500 vehicles, trucks, and tanks begin to roll. An impressive and reassuring spectacle for America and her allies. Part of America's vast armored armada, dedicated to the victory of the United Nations. <laughs> 